My name is Sven, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing great. A few weeks ago I was approached by the team of Chromatica to review the latest plugin called Digidiff. So I spent some time with it and I want to show you what it does. We're also doing a giveaway of a few licenses, but more on that later. Digidiff is a diffusion plugin that helps adding character to a color grade that you would normally only get from diffusion filters on a camera lens. And it is in no way designed to be a replacement of those filters, but it tries to give you the same aesthetics and maybe help when you want a certain filter that you couldn't get on set while shooting. Also because it's a plugin, there's certain benefits that you get from it, but we'll talk about those later. So let's load up the plugin and see what it does. And because this plugin tries to emulate realistic diffusion, it is operating in a scene referred environment which means you have to tell it your current working color space. Digidiff supports quite a lot of color spaces, but for this review, let's set it to DaVinci Intermediate as we're using this today. But as you can see, it can work with most industry standards and most cameras right away. So let's just apply it on a couple of shots. We can open the preset list and see a bunch of pre-built filters. The team has sampled original filters and recreated them with the plugin. And with the first two sliders we can modify the size and the intensity of those filters. So if you want a kind of dreamy and soft look, we could maybe try the dream sequence preset or the glimmer glass preset. And most of them look very subtle until you turn them off and on again. Now you can also create custom looks with the diff designer. This consists of three parts, the core, the body and fall off. Essentially those are three blurs in a sequence that influence each other slightly. The core is mainly useful for a small diffusion around highlights. The body is a bit wider and the fall off covers quite large areas. But depending on how big or small the core is, the bigger or smaller the body and fall off will be as well, because they depend on each other and therefore create quite realistic diffusion. You can also select one of the presets and then switch to custom because then it will give you the exact values that were used to create this preset so you can start from there. The best part however about the diff designer is that you can also save your settings as a custom preset. And once you do that, the preset will show up over here in the preset list, so if you have a look that you really like, you can simply reuse it on multiple projects. And one more thing you can do is to limit the diffusion to certain areas with a power window. So if you just want some glow around a sign for example or a lamp, you can do it like this. It is also a good idea if you just want the softness around the edges of the frame like from a vintage lens. Down below the diff designer you will find an experimental tab, where you can also just limit the diffusion to highlights, which can be useful, because that's maybe even easier than using a power window, and since the plugin does some sort of auto exposure compensation when you increase the filter strength, you can also uncheck this here if you like, but this then obviously will brighten the image slightly depending on how much diffusion you add. So who's it for? I think Digidiff is a useful plugin for both colorists and videographers who edit and color grade their own footage. Of course, it doesn't replace real filters and it surely can't replicate exactly what a filter does on set, but it also comes with the benefit that you don't get the problems of real filters. So for example ghosting and extreme flaring from a light source that's out of frame would be problematic and would require quite difficult VFX work if you would want to remove them. But if the diffusion happens in post, however, you can simply move the sliders a bit and get exactly what you're looking for. Another benefit of using a plugin for diffusion is that keying and rotoscoping would become way more difficult if there was a filter on the lens. But if you move this to the color grading stage again, you can easily put the filter behind the qualifier or rotoscoping, making your life just much easier. And the size of this virtual filter is also independent from the focal length, because it basically comes after the lens. Essentially, it's just a good idea to have a tool like this at your disposal. So, one more thing about the plugin that I really liked. When Chromatica approached me with the tool, I did find some minor bugs at first, but I told them and within a couple of days those bugs were fixed. I even suggested two small features that could improve the tool even further, which they kindly spent time on to implement. And this kind of customer service stood out to me and it is worth noting. So if you want to get Digidiff, you can head over to their website where you can buy it with a one-time payment, no subscription, which is again a major bonus. You will get two seats with the license and free lifetime updates. But before you buy it, let me also tell you that we're doing a giveaway on my channel. So you can win one of three licenses here in the comment section and for that you just have to subscribe to my channel and comment diffuse me under this video. The giveaway will end on the 20th of May and I'll release a YouTube short where I pick three random winners so make sure to look out for this one as well. Really hope you liked this walkthrough and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing to not miss out on upcoming episodes. And until then, I will see you in the next video.